Hi, I'm Stephen with MikeReynolds.com, and today we're talking about the Sennheiser ME67 Long Shotgun. Uh, the ME67 is the third shotgun mic in our series of reviews uh, on shotguns. Now, if you're unfamiliar with shotgun mics, um, well, by all means, just go back and watch the uh, introduction to shotgun mics, because it'll help you understand some of the terminology uh, used in this and other reviews going forward. Uh, the Sennheiser ME67 uh, is, again, a shotgun gun therefore a condenser which just means um, it needs a power supply either internal like from a battery or external like from uh, phantom power which is usually supplied by uh, a preamp off of a location sound mixer or off a recorder like what we use the uh, uh, zoom h6 now the me67 doesn't have a full range frequency response like some of the other shotguns we've talked about um, this has a range of 40 hertz up to 20k uh, it's still good for capturing dialogue or sound effects now, it also has a bass roll-off, uh, which is designed to gradually drop off frequencies below 120 hertz uh, when it's turned on. Now, as far as sound pressure level is concerned, um, the ME67 has an SPL of 126 dB. Uh, this is a pretty typical of all the smaller uh, diaphragm condensers. Uh, shotguns are also designed not to handle extremely loud sounds from close up, like capturing an explosion for sound effects. Um, the pickup pattern of shotguns as a whole is always very unique and even more unique per make and model. Now, in some of our previous reviews on shotguns, uh, those started out with either a supercardioid or hypercardioid characteristics. The ME67, like most long shotguns, are low bar pickup patterns from the jump. Um, so that capsule is positioned here along these interference tubes. Uh, that becomes low bar and makes it extremely directional. Now, we've used the Sennheiser ME67 to record one of our blogs thus far. That's what, when we were talking about the AKG C568B. So if you want to hear what the ME67 sounds like, go back and watch that blog and keep an ear out for this guy. Um, the ME67 is used when dialogue is usually farther than three feet away. Uh, this is because it has a longer interference tube, making it that much more directional. When used indoors, it is really sensitive to movement created when moving the mic around to get dialogue uh, while the camera is still rolling. It is a best practice to always have the windscreen uh, on the ME67 when moving around. And of course, when you go outside, uh, extra, extra protection is going to be needed like the Zeppelin or a Wooly or a Windsock. Um, I have personally used the ME67 at crucial times uh, when a wider shot pushed the mic uh, farther away from the dialogue. Uh, this mic makes a good backup to the Sennheiser MKH 416, uh, and it captures a very realistic sound when aimed in the, in the target zone, which is between the mouth uh, and the chest. Now, normally you would pay about $300 to buy a mic like this. It's not too bad, but if you want to try it out, you can go to microwaves.com and you can rent this mic for about $30 for three days. Uh, we also have the shock mounts, the boom poles, cables, and uh, the boom pole C-stand adapters for you to utilize as well. Well, that wraps things up on the ME67. Until next time, I'm Steven with MikeReynolds.com.